did um, a group of Telluride, I know you have some teachers and a board member up here, how did you find out about this opportunity? Why did you want to make the trip over here to do this? Well, Greg Lawler, our UNICEF director, is the one who had called me up and suggested that this might be a great opportunity for our teachers to hear more about SB 191, but also hear more about what teaching uh, needs to look like and should look like as we move forward into, into this century. We always talk about 21st century skills, but we are already 13 years into that already, and we're probably doing a lot of things right, but there's a lot of things that we can continue to do better. So when he called us up and talked to both myself and talked to some of our uh, teachers in the, the TEA, we jumped on the opportunity to come down here. What has been your impressions of what you've heard so far, and what do you kind of hope your teachers get by the end of the day? I think the things that I've heard so far really resonate well with me. I tend to read a lot of Tony Wagner, um, Yang Zhao, who are two of my favorite authors, I think, on what education is going to look like or should be looking like, not only in the 21st century, but today, and what it should be looking like right now. So those things are really resonating well. I came from a pretty pro progressive district in Chicago suburbs, and we talked about the technologies, and we talked about how 21st century skills are not just about technology, it's about learning strategies, learning styles, the uh, whole idea of entrepreneurialism and uh, creative thinking. So all of those things I'm really excited to hear here. Just talking with some of the teachers, there's some things that I think are really resonating with them, especially as we talk about doing the same things over, we're going to get the same results, and while Telluride performs really well on state test, there's the opportunities for us to grow beyond that because we know we are sending our students on into a more global economy, a uh, global world, whether it's going into colleges or going into the workforce after high school. And our kids need to be prepared for that. And it's rapidly changing, and it's not going to be just based on test scores, which has been a major focus, I think, in a lot of states across the country. Okay. As we go into Senate Bill 191 and uh, we implement this evaluation, what do you think the opportunities are there for your teachers to, 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 have a, to have maybe like a leadership role in defining what their profession looks like? Where, where do you see opportunities in 191? I think it's a great opportunity. I think that the, the new rubrics, while quite extensive uh, and a lot, of, a lot of things are involved in that, have been very well thought out. And I think the opportunity is going to come for our teachers to serve as leaders and looking at what are the types of predictors, what should we be looking for in the classroom that indicates that students are being successful. It's not about a dog and pony show anymore. It's about an ongoing professional development. It's about an ongoing growth that we are expecting from our students that our teachers are feeling more professional, I think, or will feel more professional in this opportunity. And so it's not going to be a top-down, this is what I'm looking for as a superintendent or what my principals are looking for. It's going to be a collaborative effort to say, these are the standards, this is the rubric that we're looking. How would we see that in practice in your classroom? And really have the teachers develop those and really take ownership and leadership and accountability for their own professional development and their own growth. What do you see the importance of getting your teachers and yourself and a board member in the same room today to hear this, this kind of material? I think it's great. We've had the conversations ourselves to some degree, but I think that the, the power in this is hearing it from people outside of Telluride, hearing it in a larger group, hearing it with, in this case, with the teachers from Durango, um, hearing the same thing at the same time. So we have a board member who is going to be working on the policies that will Im impact. We have administrators who are going to be actually actualizing the, the development of the, uh, some of this. And we have the teachers who are going to have to be living day to day with this process and are the ones who are on the ground floor. So I think to he have everybody in the same room is an incredible opportunity for us to then take this back, have further conversations not only today, but with our 1338 committees, with our building accountability committees, um, in our staff meetings about professional development and about teacher, val teacher effectiveness. Okay. Last question is just basically, uh, what's, I haven't talked to anybody from Telluride before, what's the, uh, what's the, the mood out there in, in education right now? What you're hearing from your parents, your community, your teachers, how, how's, it, how's the year going? The year's going great. Um, it's, Telluride has is, is been a pretty high performing district uh, over the last many years and um, I followed a great superintendent and we're kind of at a great opportunity. I always say it's, it's the perfect storm. We have Common Core coming in, so we have curriculum changes occurring. We have uh, a teacher effectiveness bill coming in, so we're looking differently at how we're evaluating teachers. Um, we have parents, we, we're seeing a lot of growth. We've grown over 100 students in the last two years alone. And so parents are coming from other communities, coming from high-performing schools across the country, moving to Telluride to put their kids in school there, 
and there's this great opportunity for growth. Um, we were fortunate to just pass a mill levy in November, which will help us. Part of that money was uh, is going to be used for teacher effectiveness and professionalism, and it's a great opportunity for the community to show that support. And I think there's a lot of enthusiasm, anxiety perhaps with teachers because this is change, this is new, and what are we looking at? Um, but they're going to have such a great opportunity to be in on the ground floor of this change and to help guide how it should look in the future that I think it's going to be in the long term uh, put Telluride even further on the map. And what's your role in managing that anxiety? I think my role is to, is to realize and help people realize that we have a lot of young teachers who've never been anywhere else or this is their first job. Um, we have quite a few seasoned teachers who have, who have never been anywhere else either. And part of that is saying that there is a world beyond Telluride out of the, what we call, we always talk about getting out of the box canyon. And my role is to help them see that this isn't about gotcha. This isn't about um, that you're doing something wrong. It's about taking what we're doing and changing that to better align with the outcomes that we need our students to have as they go on into uh, the future. And we talk about how different it is for our teachers who have children in kindergarten who may be teaching at the high school or middle school now, how different their children's lives will be as they grow up versus the ones they've been teaching. And that sort of puts it in perspective that they recognize the realities that the world is changing. Is there anything you'd like to add I haven't asked you about? No, it's just been a great opportunity and, and Telluride really is looking at how can we work together with the CDE, with the CEA on making these changes for uh, teacher effectiveness and we see it as a, as a perfect opportunity to mirror curriculum changes with teacher effectiveness changes and it's, it's going to be a bumpy ride but I think it's going to be worth it in the end.